Hi, I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. Our question this week is soil related. What's alkaline soil versus acidic soil? How does it matter to what we grow? And can we really alter our pH enough to make a difference? Without getting into a complicated discussion on soil chemistry, which we not only don't have time for, but I'm also not capable of conducting, the bottom line when it comes to soil is, like my grandmother used to say, dance with the one who brung you, or love the one you're with, or any number of other adages. Yes, there are ways to change the pH of your soil, but those methods don't last, creating a constant battle of the wills that not only you will not win, but you'll also waste a lot of time, money, and effort along the way. Our soil in Central Texas is on the alkaline side, and lowering the pH of alkaline soil is more challenging than raising the pH of acidic soil. Gardeners in the eastern half of the U.S. who have acidic soil often use lime to increase the pH, but we don't have a similar tool for easily lowering the pH here. Although amending with sulfur can acidify the soil, the effects are very short-lived and so aren't the best use of time or resources. If you have acid-loving plants, such as hydrangeas, it would be best to keep them in a container where you can manage and alter the soil and its pH more easily. The fact that our soil is alkaline here in Central Texas is why we can't successfully grow many of the plants that we might like to, like camellias, many types of pine trees, and even blueberries. So the best answer to soil pH is to plant species that can grow in our native soil without any problems. Plants that are native to our region, of course, would be most appropriate. But also, plants that are adaptable to our soil type. There are certain plant nutrients, such as iron, that are much less available at higher pH, and many plants struggle with those lower levels of elements that are essential to their growth and development. Other species, those that have evolved in a certain region along with the soil, are much better at coping. Our plant this week is Calendula officinalis, most commonly just called Calendula, but occasionally referred to as pot marigold. This bold little sunflower relative makes a great addition to any herb garden, but also looks right at home among other plants in just about any setting. There are many different varieties of Calendula, but all have striking deep green leaves and bright, vibrant flowers. Yellow and orange are the most common flower colors, and blooms can be as big as four inches across although two inches or so is more common. Calendula are fairly low growing to about a foot and a half tall and about as wide. They're most commonly referred to as tender perennials, meaning that they will normally be annuals in typical Central Texas winters, although they may come back in milder times. Calendula has medicinal properties and is edible, and as with most herbs, it will do a little better with regular irrigation. Full sun's best, and soil that has a good amount of organic matter will really keep these plants thriving. Calendula are very easy care, low maintenance plants and make a great addition to any garden flowering from late spring all the way through fall. Our viewer picture this week is from Sharon Black Green. She used this milk crate to protect a young Mexican honeysuckle from the deer. This idea would also work to protect strawberries from birds and squirrels and is obviously an attractive playground for more slithery garden visitors. Thanks, Sharon. We'd love to hear from you, so visit us at klru.org ctg to send us your questions and pictures from your garden. Mm -hmm.